The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. Fraud and brutal cruelty beyond words. This sums up the heartless global fur industry, which is exposed in the award-winning documentary Skin Trade, directed by Shannon Keith, a vegan animal rights attorney from the U.S. and founder of the nonprofit animal welfare organization Animal Rescue Media and Education. Ms. Keith represents animal rights activists and organizations. Her clientele include shark or showing animals respect and kindness, the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, and others. She is also the founder of Uncaged Films, a film production company that released the award-winning documentary Behind the Mask, a history of the animal liberation movement in 2006 and skin trade in 2010. Fur is one of those things that there's just no argument for. Fur for vanity, and that's ridiculous. It should be gone and over with by now. I made skin trade so that people can see what goes on, how animals are killed for fur, and how they can make a change and stop the brutal fur and fashion industries. Skin trade features an array of prominent fashion designers, celebrities, government dignitaries, and others who speak out against the blood-soaked product that is fur. They include, among others, U.S. Congressman Dennis Kucinich, Academy Award-nominated vegan actor James Cromwell, and four-time U.S. National Basketball Association champion and vegan John Sally. On today's edition of Stop Animal Cruelty, we present the conclusion of our three-part series that has been focusing on this film with further excerpts from Skin Trade. The consumer fraud perpetrated by the fur industry has reached a whole new level by saying that fur is green. There's nothing green in my book about fur. It's anything but. It certainly isn't... Uh environmentally sound for the animals involved and it's not environmentally sound for anybody no fur in my life animals are part of the environment and the ecosystem so if you're killing animals you're killing something that has to do with the environment so how is that eco-friendly that's like let's go chop down the whole forest and say that's eco-friendly because wood is biodegradable i mean it's ridiculous there's lots of people who purport to be green and the fur industry is one of them and that for me is greenwashing i don't find anything green about the fur trade. The whole purpose of the tanning process is to preserve them from decay. And unfortunately for the environment, we're really good at it. And those products will be with us for an extremely long period of time. They'll still be fur products around long after human beings have left the planet. The tanneries that, that are used to tan the hides for fur are extremely environmentally destructive. They're polluting our water, polluting the ground. Raising animals for, you know, in any way, in any factory farmed way is so, is the worst thing, worst thing ever for the environment. Trying to convince us it's green is like telling us that toxic sludge is good for you. First of all, the process that they need to use to preserve the fur, there's nothing green about it. There's no way of getting around the fact that the, the process of tanning requires uh, um, huge amounts of water and uh, chemicals, uh, metals, dyes, solvents, acids. Uh, there's just no easy way to deflesh these things, to defur, uh, to remove the fur from the skins. And these fur farms that are keeping animals contained in these small enclosures, what happens to the urine and feces of all these animals? There's nothing green about it. Tanneries um, throughout the 19th century and the 20th century have just a very long and unfortunate history of polluting a lot of uh, different water supplies. 
Well, it's obviously better to have a fake fur than a real one any day because the animals don't suffer. It's also better environmentally because although the furriers are quick to say that a real fur is natural, it isn't unless it's on the animal. Before they turn a skin into a fur garment, it has to go through the tanning process which involves a host of deadly chemicals. Once you take that fur off and tan the hide, add all these mortents to stop the animal's fur from decomposing, uh, it won't go back into the ground. You can throw it out of the window. It'll be there 10 years later. These chemicals can persist for a very, very long time when dumped on the ground and can remain a source of pollution for a very long time. There's no way it can benefit the environment. There's no possible way raising an animal for a piece of fur that's not biodegradable can be good for the environment. The complete, complete, not even a little bit of truth, but complete falsehoods that were being offered up to consumers, I, I was really stunned at that. And I can't believe that's allowed. You know, it seems like you would I don't know, I, I tend to think you get in trouble for lying, so, and lying to manipulate a sale. I guess you have to lie super duper to get somebody to cough up 35,000 bucks for a pile of dead animals. I think some people are so incredibly selfish, they can't see beyond their own needs, because there really isn't any excuse for wearing fur. It's disgusting, fur is disgusting. It's just disgusting, there's no getting around it. I don't know, I find it truly shocking that it could go on, but I even find it more shocking that it's the information's out there and people aren't checking it out. I mean, in the case of a meat coat, we're talking about dozens and dozens of animals that line up for that. Chinchilla, outrageous how the number of animals that are, uh, it takes to make a chinchilla coat. Just, just incredible. I'll just be sitting on the couch and the, he'll just sit on my lap and watch TV with me and fall asleep with me and I mean, I mean, what's there not to love? They're so adorable. And this is what was happening through the cage. Yeah. That's why we knew we couldn't keep them apart. You kind of fall in love with them. They, yes, have, they have more personality than some of our friends. I love you. Stop Animal Cruelty will return after this brief message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. This is Stop Animal Cruelty on Supreme Master Television, with today's program featuring excerpts from the documentary Skin Trade. We now continue with more from this award-winning film. A lot of times when an item of clothing is sold and it's called faux fur, it's been found out that actually the faux fur does contain some dog and cat hair from China. That is just absolutely despicable. I mean, we're out here trying to do the right thing. We're trying to buy products that don't contain these animal products, and we're being lied to. And of course, there's also the issue of fake fur being, is it? How fake is it? Americans have been easily defrauded by the faux fur industry. When I got to Congress, the big issue that came up was the issue of the importation of dog and cat fur from products that were made in China. <laughs> so now the pig fur has real fur in it, which is just crazy. They have very few environmental regulations. They have no regulations for their fur industry. Which is why you see such horrific scenes coming out of China. You see people stamping on crates of dogs, cats, raccoon dogs, wildlife. <laughs> throwing those crates off the tops of trucks. You see them abusing animals in ways that uh, you would never, ever get away with doing on a public street. A lot of this industry is getting moved to China where there are no laws protecting animals. 
But I don't want anyone to be disillusioned to think that there are laws in the U.S. protecting them because they're not. People actually do buy real fur thinking that it's fake. A lot of that stuff comes in from China. And you can have dog and cat fur that is marked, actually deliberately marked as faux fur that isn't at all. Good morning, Office of Congressman Jim Moran. I learned about an act called the Truth and Fur Labeling Act initiated by Senator Jim Moran. So I decided to give him a call and find out what it was about. Hello. I was reading the press release about the Truth and Fur Labeling Act that you introduced. And I just wanted to hear a little bit about that. I know that most American consumers would not want to buy products that were made of dog or cat fur. The problem is that many Americans do buy products made of dog or cat fur because they don't know. They read false labels or they buy garments that are not labeled. Currently, the law says that if the product is less than $150, they don't have to list the types of fur. And that's a loophole that many companies have chosen to exploit so as to use dog or cat fur because uh, in places like China particularly, it's very cheap to, uh, to get dog fur, primarily because of the uh, hideous way in which they, uh, they get the fur. They are brutal, and uh, sometimes they skin them alive. But this is a matter of uh, enabling Americans to know what it is that they are buying. You know, we're, we're not mandating uh, anything but informing the consumer. Well, let me get this straight. So if somebody walks into a store and they want to buy a coat that has faux fur trim mm -hmm. and it says that it's, this is the fibers are synthetic, yep. that fur trim could have dog or cat fur in it. In fact, uh, we have reason to believe it does have dog or cat fur in it. 96% of the fur trimmed jackets in retail stores were found to be domestic dog wolf or raccoon dog and they were mislabeled or not labeled at all and that's why we want this legislation to pass that closes this loophole we have a choice the question is will human beings make the choice that's that's it just choose choose and it ends at the end of it all after you have been deceived and lied to. After you have paid extravagant amounts of money for that beautiful fur coat. Just remember, there is someone that was deceived and lied to more than you ever were. There is someone that paid far more than you for that beautiful fur coat. What would your skin be worth? The message is clear. To put an end to the ruthless fur trade, we must all do our part by refusing all merchandise with fur and animal skin. I learned a lot in this film, and, and uh, you know, I wasn't aware that 96% of all faux fur contains some you know, cat and dog hair. Uh, so it's going to make me rethink a lot of my choices. And every person who makes a purchase has, is a voting. If we dare do it, to make the right decision, we can actually stop this from happening. That's amazing. We, re we really have the power. It doesn't have to happen. Hi, this is Rami saying be veg, go green, and save the planet. Hi, I'm Shannon Keith. Be veg, go green, and save the planet. Our sincere appreciation, Shannon Keith, and all others who contributed to the making of Skin Trade for permitting us to share your profound documentary. May people across the globe heed your powerful voice and adopt the organic vegan lifestyle 
for the sake of animals, the planet, and indeed, for humanity. For more details on Skin Trade, please visit www.skintradethemovie.com. For more information on animal rescue media and education, please visit www.arme.tv. Altruistic viewers, thank you for joining us on today's Stop Animal Cruelty. Now, please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for enlightening entertainment. Coming up next after noteworthy news, may all beings cherish each other's vibrant company on our beautiful earth. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash stop dash animal dash cruelty.